Hi, I'm Kimberly Cabral with Mask. I'm founder of Mask and publisher of Mask the Magazine. We're here tonight at Changing Hands Bookstore to acknowledge our SAT student writers of Mask the Magazine and our poem contest winners. So please help me introduce our first speaker, founder of Mask Magazine, Kimberly Cabral. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Changing Hands um, for uh, helping us host this tonight and also for uh, carrying our uh, quarterly publication. Um, I would love to thank you guys for coming out um, to celebrate this night um, with us for your children and um, just an inspiration to us as an organization. Um, for those of you that don't or may not know what MASK is, it's uh, Mother's Awareness on School Age Kids. We're a nonprofit organization and um, it started in 2007. And basically what we do is we go out and um, help educate uh, the community, families, kids on issues that our kids are facing today, whether it's drug trends, internet safety, depression, eating disorders, self-esteem. Um, our whole thing is we're trying to bridge the gap between parents and kids and get them talking. Um, we can get to kids all day long because uh, we work in the schools and we provide free programs for the schools. But sometimes, you know, in today's world for us, parents we're so busy it's hard to make another meeting or um, you know to do the research to keep up to date on all these trends so um, in efforts to reach the whole unit um, we've uh, come out with a quarterly publication which uh, encompasses what we do as an organization but just a more convenient form um, one of my favorite parts of the magazine is the SAT section it's uh, the student awareness tools and I thank the students here tonight for um, wanting to to be part of it and for letting us hear your voice on these issues. Um, I'm completely humbled each time I read the stories and I've yet to read a story without crying. Um, so I just want to thank you because it's so cool um, to understand your world even better. Nobody knows it better than you. Um, I'd like to first uh, um, honor our poem writers. Um, Jacob, where are you? Oh, <laughs> you're always right there. Um, our poem writers first. It was our first uh, um, poem contest uh, for the magazine. Since our magazine is about kids, we want to include the kids as much as we can in the magazine. So we started a poem contest for our Meals That Matter section. Um, and basically the uh, tagline was, you know, what does the dinner time mean to you? Because as an organization, communication, is the best thing that you can have with your children to help navigate them through all of the things that are out in their world. Um, today, family dinner time doesn't happen as much as it did when we were growing up. Um, we're on to activities and you know, you name it, we're on the road. So, but that dinner time conversation is so important for kids. I mean, we can all remember when we had bad days, that's where we talked about it with our family. That's what we, um, you know, we, that was our outlet. Um, for kids today, their world is so much more crazy and um, they need that outlet. They need to be able to talk. So we have that section in the magazine to just talk about, you know, meals that matter. Have dinner time with your kids. If it's one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, um, have that time, have that conversation. And if you don't have that conversation at the dinner table, make sure you're having it somewhere, whether it's in the car while we're driving them around or before they go to bed when they're tired because they really like to talk then. Um, so the meals that matter, if we can have um, Joshua Wales come up and um, Kennedy Pyle. You could come up right here. <laughs> yes, you can, absolutely. <laughs> Do you want to stand right over here, sweetie? Um, I just want to thank you guys. Um, your poems are just phenomenal. Um, it is so cool to understand how much your family means to you. Um, it comes out in those words in your poems. So thank you for being a part of it. And we'd like to honor you with these little plaques that has your published work in it. Thank you. Here is your own coffee to have that has your work in it. 
Um, can I ask you guys, like, what does it mean for you to be here today? Um, it's It feels really good because we worked hard on our poems, but um, it just feels even better to know that um, we got to be able to share them with everyone. Hi. Um, I don't really know what to say, but thank you, and that it feels kind of weird to open this and see my name in it, <laughs> but I just think it's really cool, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And at this time, I'd like to inter introduce to you um, our editor um, of Mass the Magazine, Michelle Jacoby. First of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for coming out uh, this evening. Mask is such an extraordinary product. I've been a journalist for many, many, many years. I won't tell you how long, because I'm going to date myself. But um, this is probably the first publication I've worked on that really engages people. It's all about the parents. It's all about the kids. And so when Kimberly uh, and uh, the Mask crew started Mask the Magazine, and we talked about story ideas and content, they were really, really set and firm on having a section in the magazine that was produced entirely by students. And so the first thing that came to my mind was, great, there's going to be a lot of editing involved. But <laughs> I can tell you that three issues in, um, you guys are phenomenal. I mean, the writing is so impressive. And it just blew me away. And just like Kimberly said, there were stories that I just walked away crying. So thank you for sharing your stories. So the first couple people I want to recognize are obviously the journalism teachers. And without them, these kids wouldn't be knocking out these stories as well as they are. So the first one would be Chris Urban over at Corona del Sol. She's <laughs> just simply amazing. I mean, you know, to have to be so open. This is kind of a weird project, you know, to have uh, a publisher come to you and say, hey, we want your kids to participate and write stories for a magazine. It's pretty daunting. And not only that, but they were in the middle of Ames, and there was all kinds of crazy things going on. So, Chris, thank you so much for, <laughs> and the kids did, did awesome. Um, the next person I'd like to thank is Mr. Damian Tippett over at Perry High School, another Phenomenal teacher. Um, and, he, and his group was actually more challenging because we were just about ready to go on a summer vacation. So the kids actually wrote after school ended. They, they wrote into the summer vacation, and it was, it was great. A little scary because deadlines were coming, and I didn't know what was going on. But they, they, they just knocked it out of, out of the ballpark. So thank you, you guys, for just really being great teachers because that's what they need and and um, for teaching them just great storytelling so thank you for that so uh, what we want to do right now is just to thank our student writers and the first ones we're gonna do are uh, the kids from Corona and unfortunately not everybody could be here so we will recognize the kids that are here um, Presley Hirsch is our first one Come on up. Thank you so much, Presley. And you know what we're actually going to do is we're also going to have, um, you know, just sort of say a couple of words about what you, uh, you know, your experience writing. And uh, Kimberly has a couple of questions, so we're going to okay. convert it to her. Oh, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, well, for us, um, you know, this magazine is, that section of the magazine is really um, to give you, to give you guys a platform to be able to share what your world look and feels like and for uh, the reader of the magazine the parent we really hope that they can use this section as a conversation starter to say wow look at what what's going on with these kids in high school look at what they were um, you know what they had to be, d deal with and look at how they dealt with it so it's a great um, conversation starter and teaching tool for um, for the parents but for us we just want to know you know what did it mean for you to be able to share that voice and to go out into the com your community and talk about it. So thank you. <laughs> um, 
it was just a really exciting experience to get to, you know, I interviewed different um, professionals, I interviewed psychologists and our school police officer and other police officers, and I talked to students, figure out what students thought, and we, there was definitely a lot of conversations amongst the staff, and so it was just really interesting to get to talk to everyone. Everyone has a different opinion, and especially, you know, I think it's a really great section because this like you know said previously students and parents definitely have different views and different ideas on things so to kind of make it come together and kind of get our voice out there it was just I think it's a really beneficial part of the magazine and I'm sorry I should have uh, preluded with that uh, the Corona del Sol students wrote about drugs on on campus which is a huge huge issue we talked a lot about um, uh, uh, what was the name of the drug? <laughs> the, um, yeah, the, yeah, those kinds of drugs. I forgot what they were called. Synthetics, that was it, yeah, which is scary. I mean, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and so this is very, very eye-opening to me. So it's really interesting to see inside their world because as parents, we are not with them eight to ten hours of the day, so we have no idea. And so, you know, Presley's story was very, very eye-opening, so thank you. Um, the next one is Jackie Marzoka. Thank you, Jackie, for writing your piece also on uh, drugs on campus. And then I'll have somebody for the uh, question for you. Um, my question is, was it um, intimidating to go out into the, your school and ask about the personal stories? It was definitely intimidating because we're talking to people that are older than us and have been through a lot more than we have. And looking at it from our perspective, what we see every day is a lot different from what parents see every day. And it was definitely an eye opener for, and I think we helped, hopefully we helped parents and the community get a better idea of what's going on. But it was a great experience, so thank you. And then there were other students from Corona who uh, has contributed as well, but unfortunately couldn't make the event. So, um, but going on, we have three students from Perry High School who are here. Um, the first one is Brooke Karaki. <laughs> Well, Brooke, tell us um, what story you wrote or you were responsible for. The Perry High School students wrote about uh, self-image and social media and how, you know, um, the Internet really has an effect on the way kids see themselves and uh, both negative and positive. So the kids were great in, in opening our eyes to that. So go ahead. All right. So in a society of just social networking constantly, especially high school, Going into it, I was kind of nervous, thinking, okay, I already know a lot about the topic. Once I started researching, that's when she phrased it best. I was, it was eye-opening. So thank you so much for that opportunity uh -huh. and giving it. Absolutely. My, my pleasure. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Oh, there's your mic. The next one that we would like to bring on up is Brianna Bartos. social media story? Um, Brooke and I actually teamed up on the Media and Mirror story and it was just about you know how media has such a huge effect on teens and whether they really realize it or not um, it does and uh, we did learn a lot we did a lot of research and found some really surprising things and um, it was just a great opportunity to be actually published in a magazine that's kind of a dream so it was great um, thank you And then our, our last uh, Perry High School student is Drew Crawford. Uh, and Drew actually wrote a couple of stories for this section. So tell us what you wrote about. Um, well, I wrote two stories. I wrote a story on this contest we have at our school that's called the Biggest Loser Competition. And it's uh, based off the TV show. It's a competition that all of our teachers have and participate in if they would like to. And I also wrote a story about uh, weight loss and wrestling because I play sports at Perry and I'm a wrestler and I'm involved with a lot of people that lose weight loss, um, either healthily or unhealthily. So. Great, yeah. well tell us about your experience as 
music? Did you learn a lot? Did you um, well, yes, I did learn a lot. I learned how to um, cooperate with a deadline under a lot of stress. <laughs> and no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, it was just an eye-opening experience because I, I got to take um, my passion of writing and my passion of sports and put them together and tell the public audience like the actual truth behind what really happens instead of them just inferring or guessing for themselves. I just got to be straight up with them, and I really like that a lot, and I aspire to be a writer, and it was just great being able to write for a magazine. So it was amazing, and I'm so grateful for the experience. shot a few photos oh. not a lot made it in but right. well I mean and as everybody knows the visuals in the magazine are just as important as the content they really tell the story so thank you thank you so much for doing that for us did you have a good time doing it I did I had a good time taking the pictures and I had a good time watching these three and all the rest of them uh, write for the magazine <laughs> they were uh, there were a lot of us in the class and mm -hmm. not a lot of them really wanted to have anything to do with it it was extra work on top of everything we already had to do yeah. and uh sorry i get nervous in front of crowds <laughs> <laughs> and uh um just all the students from uh, perry high school that worked on the magazine they put in a lot of work and a lot of hours and uh i think they did a really good job personal stories these are this is the opportunity for the kids to really sort of speak from their heart we've had stories come through that to Kimberly and I felt like they were trying to communicate with their parents you know it was sort of the things that they kept inside and didn't really say out loud but took the opportunity to write it and be published and um, you know we respect the privacy of our students we uh, don't always print their names we uh, always put a disclaimer that that their identity is uh, is being withheld for, for various reasons, but it's it takes a lot of courage, you know, to tell your own story. So thank you. Um, so tell us what you wrote. Um, I wrote about a student who who was confronted with the problem of weight loss, and she didn't know how to go through with it and lose the weight, so she turned to pills. It was a pill called Adderall. It helped you stay focused, but it also caused you to lose your appetite. So she never ate, and she would stay up for anywhere from 14 to 18 hours a day, and she hardly ever slept. Um, she just had a lot of problems, and she was feeling really low about herself, and she wasn't comfortable around people. She wasn't comfortable at home, and she just thought she was ugly, and she couldn't deal with everything in life. And, you know, high school's a rough place, and doing drugs for some people to make themselves look prettier or smarter. It's just how they cope with high school and the influences of everything around them. So getting this story out for that person, I feel so grateful to have their story out there and have other people know that drugs are out there. Your kids might be taking them because they have low self-esteem or they don't think they're smart enough or good enough for everyone else. So watch out. Your kid might have low self-esteem esteem and you may not know it so it's really important to watch your kids and just make sure they're having a good life because you only have one thank you thank you um, thank you all I just to sit back and to, to be able to watch you guys just speak and I mean you are change makers yourself and um, I'm just so honored to have you guys on board. Um, you know, these magazines, um, our distribution is 20,000, so they go out to 20,000 people. 
Um, you know, and when we hear kids are reading them, I mean, we get the stories that the kids are reading the magazines, and we're like, wow, they're for parents, and the kids are, you know, um, getting, you know, wanting the information, and then also, it's uh, dig it's on digital, um, so the numbers there are just going viral. So this message is getting out, and you guys are um, a part of us in helping to make change. So thank you, um, you know, for taking the time. Um, to do it, um, to wanting to be a part of it, um, and you know, doing just a phenomenal job. So I thank you. I thank you all for coming. And um, some of all of you guys, I want your numbers because when you're writers, you can be writing for our magazine. So um, you know, thank you, thank you, everybody for coming. It meant a lot. I really wanted people to know that, you know, the drugs are out there. Kids have access to them, whether they want them or not. It meant so much because high school students are given very little opportunity to spread their opinions, especially in such an esteemed magazine. This was just wonderful. It meant a great deal because uh, more than anything, I want to be a writer as my career, and that means a lot to me to just tell other people and inspire them about how I feel and how things are impacted in society. Hopefully that eating disorder is to be taken seriously. There's a lot of jokes about it from comedians and celebrities, but it's a real problem in high school. I hope that parents will learn from these stories and they can, you know, kind of engage better with their children and learn how to make better choices forward with their children and definitely spark conversation. The most important part of it for me was reaching out to the people that are unaware of the things going on because a lot of parents really are in the dark. We live in a completely different world as they do. I don't think parents understand our world at all. I think that students now have more problems because of social media and just bullying from other kids so they just get pressured into other things. It's definitely inspired me because I feel like during a time that you're having a hard time, you really do feel alone. I definitely want to reach out and help people that are going through that. I was nervous about writing this story, especially following Corona's amazing issue. It definitely makes me really want to be a journalist. You know, in the, in the event of a conversation like this, I think that I'm definitely someone that's more educated now and can kind of spread the with the wealth to my peers at school. It has, you know, if people come to me with problems or I notice someone's having problems, I talk to them and ask them if they need any help or if they need to talk to someone. I think it's great what MASK is doing, letting kids talk about their experiences and what they've been through. Spread the word. That way people can learn more and help understand. But I just think the more people that you can reach, the just the better it's going to make, you know, the world. If I know parents were teenagers too at one point, but suddenly there's this social media and the Facebook and the MySpace. Nothing's private. So this just gives them a way to help understand. <laughs>